I'm on my way to meet a local artist and producer who's a champion of some of Singapore's hardest working and most vital creatures, bees. I'm a big fan of his local honey, so I can't wait to see him at work and get my hands on his delicious products. So what I do is not just doing beekeeping, but I try to do bee conservations. So I actually help people to remove and rehouse wild beehive that reside in the resident area and move them to the gardens. Hi, Hi, Nithya. Good to see you again. Yeah, nice to see you again. I'm looking forward to seeing you in your natural environment. Right, great. With your bees. Okay, let's go take a look. Okay. These are the edible gardens of a halfway house. Xavier is part of an initiative that helps teach gardening and harvesting skills to prison inmates that are close to being rehabilitated back into society. We are not allowed to film the hard-working inmates, but the bees work equally as hard, pollinating this landscape. So all these amazing vegetables that I'm seeing growing are done by the residents? Yes, it's done by the residents. So they're yeah. growing their own food? We are trying to grow our own food and at the same time we're trying to have zero food waste. Mm. Okay, let me show you the bees. These are the stingless ones, right? This is the stinging ones. Okay. So this is Sorana bee. There are four main types of bees in Singapore. Serana, also known as the Asian honey bee, are about one centimeter long and have distinct yellow and black bands. So how many bees are there in one hive? Okay. Uh, for this one, roughly about mm, maybe 15 to 20,000 bees. And how much honey do you get from a hive? Okay, for this hive, if they are like this strong, mm -hmm. by a year they can produce about 30 kg of honey. 30 kg? Yes. That's an incredible amount. And this is all raw? Unpasteurized, fresh yes. from the hive honey, yes, right? Correct. Bees play a critical role in our ecosystem, with 90% of all plants requiring cross pollination to spread and thrive. Factors such as climate change, deforestation, and harmful crop pesticides have contributed to their decline. In Singapore, bees can also be looked upon as pests. It's vital we understand their importance and do more to help bees flourish again. The situation of the bee population uh, not doing well is declining at a rate of 40%, which is very alarming year by year. I realized that people, they have a beehive at home. They were called a pest control. They spray pesticide and kill all the bees. So I decided to do something about it, and that's the reason why I helped to rescue bees. Time to make a beeline for Xavier's range of 100% raw honey products. All this honey is harvested from my own hive. There are different flavors because we put them in different places. Right. So some places, like we put them in the bitter corn bushes area, so the bee actually produces honey with some... The pollen from the, yeah, from the bitter corn. Oh. Yes. The only thing I need to do is to make sure that the garden has a lot of nectar for the plant and no chemical, so the bee right, can forage and they will not be affected by the pesticide. Mm. So it's sweet, mm -hmm. and you don't get any bitterness. Mm -hmm. If anything, it's just like a depth of flavor. It's, yes. it's a beautiful honey. Two days ago, I actually harvested and saved this piece of honey for you. So wow, so it's still in its cold. Yes, you can see that there's a layer of wax that's covered on top yes. that indicates that the honey is already matured. So ah. we only harvest the honey that's matured. So it's like natural chewing gum. Mm. Wow, that is incredible. <laughs> it's like coffee, you know, yeah. like kind of, okay. kind of like fudge. Yeah. When you get, when you're chewing it down, and you still have that kind of sweetness is still being released. Uh -huh. This is, I think, this is the most incredible thing I've tasted. So, Xavier, is this what I think it is? Yeah, wine, the honey wine. <laughs> That's alcoholic, right? That's correct. And it's being made with this yummy honey over here. That's correct. You know I love my wine. Yes. All right, so get a cup. Okay. And I'm gonna let you taste some of them. Okay, you can put it all the way to the top. Okay. <laughs> oh, it definitely tastes very delicious. <laughs> it's so refreshing and it's yummy. I adore honey, and although it's high carbohydrate load, 
Honey is a wonderful source of unprocessed sugar energy. And I'm inspired to create something with that in the kitchen. The first thing that came to mind, something else is extremely nutritious, which is kombucha. Kombucha is a non-alcoholic fermented tea drink. It's very low on calories and it's high in vitamin B. So what kombucha needs is very, very simple. What you need is a scoby, some hot water, green tea, and raw honey. Scoby is basically what ferments the tea. It's a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast made out of tea, sugar or honey, and water. It takes about a month for the bacteria to form into a scoby, but you can also order it ready-made online for under $10. So let me put the green tea. At this point, we're going to add some honey. Now let the tea infuse until it turns green. After which, you pour the tea mix into a jar with scoby. You would leave this for about two days, covered with a cloth wrap like this. So you want to let the air kind of get in and let the scoby do its magic to ferment it. After two days, you can decant it. So keep your scoby in here. Pour your kombucha out into flip-top fizzy bottles like this. And then you can flavor it if you want to. You can throw in a cinnamon, you can throw in dried fruit. It's lovely and fizzy. It's beautiful, it's sparkling, it's tangy. So cheers! And it's the perfect drink to serve at a dinner party.